Money is power, and ladies, it's time to level the playing field. Hi everyone, welcome back to Makers Money. I'm Sally Krawcheck, CEO of Elevest, the digital investing platform for women. So you've had a new business idea brewing for a while, but you're not quite sure if it's time to make the leap to becoming an entrepreneur. But Sally, my career crystal ball says I'm not gonna start my own business. Listen up. Developing an entrepreneurial mindset will benefit you no matter where your career takes you. Now, I get both sides of this equation because I worked at big companies for more years than I'm going to share with you before starting Alabest from dirt. And I hear from people all the time who want to start their own businesses, which I love because it can be so energizing and interesting and exciting, but it can also be really challenging. Timing matters, team matters, luck matters. So don't take the leap unless you have an idea you're passionate, and I mean passionate with a capital P about. Two things. Number one, start a side hustle. It's smart to start exploring a passion this way because first, you're gonna learn about whether your idea is any good and if you can actually make any money from it. Second, every new business idea needs some trial and error. Believe you me, you wouldn't believe what we went through at Elevest. So don't give your notice until you know your idea is ready by giving it a test drive. The second thing I want you to do, network, network, network. Network, network. And I know what you're thinking. Network is fumbling for business cards and forced conversations and 18 holes of golf and it's what the old white guys do. But it's truly the number one unwritten rule of success in business. So make it a habit to reach out to one person every day. No big deal. It can be casual. And get together with one person outside of your company every week. Or join a professional network. Make networking part of your success equation. Joining us today is Lavi Ajayi, the entrepreneur and author of the New York Times bestseller, I'm Judging You. What a t- <laughs> <laughs> You love Lavi, it. I love it. Thank you for being here. Thank and you cheers. for having me. You know, we've got something in common. What's that? Uh, it is the fact that we were both, I think you say you were laid off. I was fired uh, before <laughs> we became entrepreneurs. Sorry. So you had what you thought was a writing hobby that turned it into a career. How do you advise people who want to do that to make that transition? At that point, I'd been blogging for mm-hmm. seven years. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, okay, I need to find a new job. But while I look for a new job, I'll keep mm-hmm. doing marketing and consulting mm-hmm. and keep blogging. Mm-hmm. But I never got a chance to get a new job. That's great. But yeah. did it really bring you down to get laid off? You know, I actually found a piece that I wrote on a blog mm-hmm. the day that I got laid off that said, it feels like the universe is pushing me to take the leap of faith I wasn't going to take myself. You know, it's funny you say that because after I got fired, even the next day when I was drinking alone, by myself in my home, (laughs) there was still part of me that said, this is going to be the best thing that ever happened to me. I just don't know how yet. Yeah, I think I knew that too. Like, I fought it tooth and nails. Hmm. Because for me, writing wasn't a career that felt tangible. Because, you know, there's a J.K. Rowlands who are writers. There's a Toni Morrison. (laughs) And I was like, I'm neither one of them. But I think um, after a couple of years, when I was like, okay, you're finding yourself in rooms where, like, outlets like the BBC and CNN are in, and here you are as awesomely lovey in these same rooms. Mm -hmm. You're a writer. Now, you've had some amazing experiences. You interviewed Oprah. Yes. Shonda Rhimes blurbed your friggin' book. You know, the OWN team called me and said, hey, we'd love for you to come and interview Oprah while holding an OWN mic on our lot. And I was like, what? How do you say no to that? And when Shonda Rhimes knew my book was coming out, and she was like, I need you to send it to me. And then your TED Women talk went supernova almost immediately. It was get comfortable being uncomfortable. Yes. I think there you talked about the first domino. What does it mean to be the first domino? I think it comes down to doing the things that's uncomfortable and difficult. In the Mm. moment, that's difficult. So when we're in rooms where somebody who's less powerful than us is being disrespected, for example, Mm -hmm. it is our job to actually speak up and say, that's not okay. So we need to disrupt power systems and conversations and rooms just to make sure that we are standing up for people who might not have the power to. Hear, hear. I call them the courageous Let, conversations, come on. but hear, hear. We need we more need, of it. We need a lot more of those. Yeah. Um, okay, we ask everybody this question. What's the stupidest thing you've ever done with <laughs> your money? What's the smartest thing you've ever done with your money? Oh, the stupidest thing I've ever done with my money is like kept it in a savings account. 
And that was so the stupidest thing. It loses, you lose money every I mean, day, so essentially, right? Yeah. Is yeah. it still in a savings account? No. Oh, good. God, no. I, okay. I can't come in front of you and be no, like, yes, Sally, not. I still have all my stuff <laughs> sitting in a savings account. I'd be so ashamed, okay? I'd be like, no, I don't deserve to be here. So what's the smartest thing you've done with your money? Take it out uh, of a savings account? Buying my first place. Yeah in a growing area in Chicago. And yeah. you live in it, and you love it, and you yeah. enjoy it. Thank you for being here with us. Oh, Such a pleasure. You are amazing. I can't say no to Sally. <laughs> I gotta be here. Okay, now let's get to some questions from all of you. Our first question asked, I keep reading the news about how little venture capital funding women get. Why the F is that? And do you think it'll change? I mean, tell me about it. The bad news first, we women have gotten so little funding, just two and two and a half percent of the total, because of systemic bias. The venture capital firms are made up primarily of white men, whose networks tend to be made up of white men, who thus listen to pitches from white men. Nothing against white men, I just hate it they get most of the money. Now let's be clear, it's not because men are better entrepreneurs than women. A study from First Round Capital showed the businesses with at least one woman co-founder performed 63%, 63% better than male only. The good news is an increasing number of VCs get that investing in women entrepreneurs is a great opportunity. Okay, here's our second question. Do you have any tips for funding my business without raising money from venture capitalists? The truth, guys, is only 1% of businesses are venture capital funded. Most businesses are funded with personal savings, loans from family, friends, and increasingly, and excitingly, crowdfunding. And here's the really interesting news. We women are consistently outperforming the men on crowdfunding platforms like Kickstarter because we're better storytellers. Even better, not only can you raise money this way, but it can also be a really good way to test your product's appeal and pick up early customers. In case you can't tell, I'm a huge fan. All right, third question. Should I get a co-founder? And if so, what quality should I look for? Yes, yes, you should get a co-founder because the research shows that startups with more than one founder are more likely, quite a bit more likely to succeed. And my advice here is to find someone who is different from you as you possibly can. And here's why. You're not perfect. Newsflash, you're not perfect. And so you're gonna have blind spots. Having someone who thinks differently than you means you have a much better chance of avoiding a fatal flaw and seeing around corners. Now, whether you decide to be your own boss or not, learning to think like an entrepreneur will pay dividends in the long run. Learning how to take calculated risks, stand in your own worth, and hone what you're good at are key building blocks for long-term success. And if you do decide to start your own business, do it with some money in the bank and go get them. We want to hear from you. Tweet to us at, at @makerswomen and use the hashtag makersmoney or send your questions in to makers.com/makersmoney. Thanks to Lovey Ajayi for joining us. She was amazing. And until next time, remember, more money, more power. <laughs>